Hello, hello, hello. I am Dr. Stephanie Andury. I'm Dr. Graham Andury. We are Sing for Your Lives. And today we are talking about uh, what it takes to be an in-demand singer. What, mm -hmm. is, what is the difference between singers who are constantly being asked to sing and singers who have to go ask to sing themselves? Uh, you know, what is it that that makes somebody feel something so intensely when they hear you sing that they want to hire you and rehire you. Um, there are, you know, there's something that sets apart the, uh, the good singers from the great singers. And I think it's something that we all recognize because we all consume music, right? We all got into singing because we felt really passionate about it. Someone who sang for us at some point, whether it was live or whether it was, you know, our moms singing lullabies to us or whether it was on the radio or wherever it was, some singer at some point had a major impact on our lives and it allowed us to feel something deep within us. And so we all recognize what that thing is, but as singers ourselves, often we sort of lose sight of that. We lose sight of the impact that our voices can have. Yeah. So think about, um, you know, think about different singers that you have heard. Uh, maybe, you know, you've gone to see live concerts where there was somebody who was like, okay, that was a good singer. I, I really enjoyed that. That was nice. Versus somebody who you saw who just floored you. And, you know, we talk about transformative singing because we have had so many experiences ourselves where we were in the audience and somebody sang something so powerfully, so intensely, so emotionally, authentically, mm. that we literally left that concert or that, that performance feeling like we were not the same person as we were when we walked in. We yeah. were transformed by that experience. Right. And likewise, we have had experiences as performers ourselves that have sort of crossed that boundary and recognizing the difference within ourselves between singing um, to sort of sound good, singing to express the music well versus singing to tell the story, singing to imbue empathy or to inspire an empathetic experience in the listener it's just a completely different paradigm. Mm -hmm. Are you singing? A good question to ask yourself is, are you singing to impress somebody? Are you, are you singing to express something that is inherent within the music? Are you are you expressing a uh, an emotion, a, a human, a, a slice of the human condition that people can empathize with, that they can learn something about themselves from that experience? Uh, because if you're just singing to impress somebody, then you're cut off from that emotional element. You're cut off from the reason that we make art in, in the first place. Um, we were just talking about this earlier today, about what is what is artistry? When we talk about developing your artistry as a singer, what really is artistry in the first place? And artistry is your uh, what we came to. This is our definition, um, that artistry is your ability to convey some aspect of humanity, of, of the human condition in a way that inspires an empathetic response in the listener. So in other words, you are, you are singing in a way that gets people to feel something that they have maybe never felt before. Mm. And, and so then they start to think about themselves differently. They start to think about life differently. They start to think about their place in the world differently. And when that happens, you have had a transformative effect on yeah. that person. Right. And really what it comes down to is uh, we always talk about storytelling. We've done workshops. We've we've had, you know, different discussions about storytelling. It's really not even about storytelling. It's about story becoming mm. because we're not just relaying something. When you are just relaying the music uh, and you are sort of separate from it, you are telling someone else's story rather than trying on that experience yourself and telling it from the first person perspective as though you are the person who is experiencing this. You are filtering the character's story through your own sort of interpretation through the filter of your own life experiences. And it becomes a totally different thing. All of a sudden, you're not a character. You're a human, right? It's We talk about the difference between acting and becoming. We're never acting. We're never pretending. As soon as you begin pretending when you're singing, as soon as you begin uh, just moving your voice out here and you're sort of disembodied from it and you are conscious about something different that's happening, maybe you're conscious of like 
what am I having for dinner later? Or what is the next piece of music that I'm singing on this recital? Or maybe I can sing this aria and go over my words from this one later on. As soon as you are disconnected, then you lose all opportunity, not just to connect with the music, but to connect with yourself and to connect with your audience. Absolutely. And so it's when we connect with the audience in that deep and powerful emotional way, that's when that's when uh, you have that effect on people that is like it goes beyond just, you know, when people come up after the performance and they they can either give you the comments of you sounded really great or my favorite comments to get are I felt everything that you were just singing about. I, I Even when I'm singing in a different language, people will say, I had no idea what the words were, but I felt everything that you were conveying. And that's my favorite comments. Like, so uh, cool. I did my job then. I, I made you feel something that you probably, maybe you had felt before, but hopefully it's something that you had never experienced before. Um, that's sort of my, my benchmark for a great performance is if you can make somebody, sorry, if you can make somebody feel something that they have never felt before, that's great artistry. Yeah, absolutely. Me. Yeah, you're allowing them to try on a different experience. You're allowing them to have some new world experience that teaches them something about themselves and how they might react or prepares them for an opportunity to react some new way later. Um it's just a really fantastic way of approaching life because as we are singing, we're delving into ourselves and we're delving into an opportunity to heal the people who are listening to us. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Mm, when for you're me. singing for you, oh, okay. when you're singing, I haven't asked you this. I don't think maybe I have, but I wasn't listening when you answered. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I must have made a transformative impact on you. Transformative. Uh, when you're singing like evil characters. Mm, mm -hmm. Which I do because I'm a bass. Um, what is the feedback that you look forward to? Because I know, mm. I know, like knowing you and knowing how Graham gets sad when he disappoints people, of course, because he's so kind and he's so loving and he's so generous with who he is. And so, um, the, the thought that comes to mind is when you were in Knoxville last year and you were it singing, it seems like last yeah, year, it does. That was this year. a couple, a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, it was, it was a long process. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and the comments that you were getting were like, I can't even look at you. I can't even shake. I know that you're not the person, you know, that your character was, but I want nothing to do with you and I won't congratulate right. you. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't getting those comments directly, but I was getting indirectly. I was, I was hearing from some of my castmates or from some of the audience members that there were other members of the audience who uh, didn't want to come up and talk to me after that show because my character was extremely evil uh, was really not a good person it was a very intense show it was a very um it was a hard show to sing uh it was it a hard was emotionally a very hard show to it was it was a hard, hard character to, to portray and i'm sure it was hard to sit through um there were parts of it that were hard to even being backstage it was hard to sit through some of these things but it was so uh, it was an important show it was a moving show it was a, the kind of show that makes you think about it changes your perspective. It changes the way that you approach uh, hard issues. And um, so, yeah, my my goal in portraying this character was not to make people feel good. Um, that was not that was not the purpose of this show or this character. It was to show people what happens when you um, when a character is imbalanced, mm -hmm. when a character doesn't know themselves doesn't know how to, um, when they don't know how to regulate themselves, they don't know how to regulate their emotions. They let rage take over. They let greed take over. They let all of these negative things take over without really digging into why that's happening or where that comes from. You know, there was a lot that I was digging into there and, and it explodes in a very, you know, negative and violent way for this mm -hmm. character. Um, so yeah, my, my, goal in that was to transform my audience in a way that made them see, okay, is there any part of that character that I need to watch for in myself? Because all of these dark types of characteristics that we see in villains are there, they exist within everybody at some level. We all have the capacity for incredible good. We all have the capacity for incredible, not good as well. And so that's when I play those characters, 
that's I'm trying to paint that picture. I'm trying to paint the picture of here's something that you need to maybe look for in yourself to make sure that this doesn't keep happening. Um, and that's a hard thing for people to to really grasp onto, but yeah. it's an important thing that I yeah. think we all need to really grapple with. Do you yeah. ever feel like the need to go apologize to people and tell them that you're like a really good person? I really like, did. Whenever I'm feeling grumpy, I go into the mountains <laughs> so I don't take it out on my family. I figure it out before I No, I really, people. I did. I felt, I felt like I wanted to go out during vows and be like, hey, everybody, I'm really like a fun loving guy. And, um, it, you know, that's, it, that was, <laughs> that was a, a difficult experience for sure. And, and there are a lot of characters that exist in, in operatic literature and musical theater literature and um and even you know in i'm a metalhead too yeah right? so i was there's gonna a lot say of, like there's a lot of anger in metal there is but the cool thing about that it. is that it's not like it's that's an ability that's a an opportunity to like offload all yeah. of that stuff in a really positive way in a way that like i always leave metal concerts on cloud nine because i'm like yeah i got rid of all of this funk all of this you know angst and stuff that had maybe been building up and i feel great now and i will say as someone who grew up very far outside of the metal community and then sort of made my foray into it after we met those are like the nicest people out there they're awesome it's they an really awesome are. awesome group yeah they really are so so really what this all comes down to are uh, is the the way that you can take your singing to the next level is yeah, obviously you gotta you gotta sing well, right? You gotta you gotta have command of your instrument. You gotta be able to do the things that the music calls for, without uh, without without people seeing your technique, right? So that's what we work on a lot in in voice lessons and coachings and training of any kind. We're trying to get our technique up to a certain level where the technique just disappears. Mm. Uh, but for so many people, what we found because of the way that voice training regimens uh, tend to be run is technique becomes the entire picture. We just work on technique. We just work on getting your voice to do all these things. And it's, and then we stop there. And so each performance that we do becomes a, um, an exercise. It becomes a, a technique showcase. Mm -hmm. It becomes a way to try to impress the judges or impress the audition panel or impress the critics out in the audience. And then we completely lose sight of the impact that we can have with our voices, right? We completely forget all of the, the times that we have been inspired or transformed by a musical performance, by a lullaby that our grandma is singing to us, by any of these amazing uh, opportunities that we have, these experiences that we have. As soon as we lose sight of that, we are completely incapable of having a transformative experience, of having a lasting experience. And this is where we get people coming to the concert hall to forget. They spend their money to come hear us so that for two hours they can forget the stresses of their everyday lives and then they go right back into their lives. We have a bigger opportunity than that. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity to change their lives with our voices. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity to hold up a mirror if we're being authentic, if we're being present and mindful and we're being honest and empathetic and really, really trying on all of the emotions that are kind of tied up in the situation that we're singing about, whether it's just a song, whether it's a vocalese, whether it's, you know, the Rahmana vocalese is all one vowel. It's just an awe the entire time through. It's one of the most emotional pieces of music mm -hmm. I've ever heard. If it's sung well, if, if it's, it's sung right, if it's sung if with it's that sung intention, well. yep. if, if it's, it's just, just sung notes. with like, where am I placing my voice? Yeah. Um, then it becomes, it becomes nothing. Right. Uh, you know, the most, the most incredible performances that I've seen have been the ones that lasted past the end of the concert mm. In other, like what I mean by that is the ones that stuck with me. Yeah. And so I woke up the next day, still just moved, blown away by yeah. what I had experienced, still moved. Yeah. Still like I wake up and I'm like, I cry again because, because I just, I'm still, in, I'm still in it. I'm still in that moment of, of what I had, you know, it, it stuck with me so hard. Yeah. So that's, that's the kind of transformative uh, singing, the transformative impact that I want to have every time I get on stage. And so here's the cool thing about that. When we, when we do that, 
and people have that experience, the you know, audience members have that experience when we sing, then all of a sudden uh, you start just getting asked to sing. You start getting, I, I'm going to a rehearsal tonight because somebody just texted me and said, hey, I need you to sing. Um, and they know, you know, they, they've worked with me a lot and they know what I have to offer. And so I get asked to sing far more than I have to go ask somebody else to sing. I don't have to really go audition for things as much as I used to, because once I got out there and started making an impact on people, those people recognize what I was able to do. And then I just get offers to sing. Yeah. It's uh, the best. There is no there is nothing more fun than opening your email and having offers for roles just like that you didn't yeah. even that you didn't even Here's a contract. For. Yeah. You, you your audition was your performance. Yeah. And so that's and honestly like who who really likes doing a, a traditional audition? They're no fun at all because they're so unnatural. You have to take, you know, you, within a couple of minutes or sometimes less, sometimes less than a minute, you have to create this whole imaginary realm around you and draw people into it and make them feel this amazing thing in no time flat. And yeah, that's, that is what we are called to do as an artist that we have to go out and audition. There's no way around that, but um, the best kind of audition is when you have a performance and somebody comes to see that performance and they're so moved by it that they, if it's somebody that has the ability to hire singers, they, you know, they're always going to concerts and they see you sing and they like what you do they come up to you ask for afterwards and say, Hey, that was amazing. I want you to come do this other thing. Like, sweet. That's, that's, I'm down. Let's do it. Uh, that's, you know, that's really what we, um, that's what we strive to do ourselves. And it's what we have been working with our students and our clients to, to kind of reimagine the whole paradigm of what it takes to be a successful performing artist in yeah. today's world. And this one shift is responsible for so many of our students and of our clients making an immediate shift in their careers to from I I have been trying to audition for, you know, years and I've never gotten anything to like overnight you have this paradigm shift and all of a sudden your performance has impact and then mm -hmm. you're starting to get things from auditions. Yeah. It's such an amazing thing to see when that happens. Absolutely. We because it's not always the, it's almost, I won't say it's almost never very often. It's not the mechanics of the voice that are holding people back. Mm -hmm. I would say 80% of the time, that's not what it is. By the time you are already auditioning for things, you have trained well enough that you know your voice and everybody at a high level is singing with good technique. There are no people who mm -hmm. have, who are singing for, you know, big managers, uh, agents or casting directors or any of those things who do not already have their technique figured out. It's the sort of imbuing it with your spirit right. that sets it apart. Right. The expectation is that you will sing well, right? It's not, it's, you're not trying to show them that you can sing well. They expect that you can sing well. What they're looking for is, can you move me? Can you move me with your performance? Because if you can move me emotionally, I know that you're going to move my audience emotionally and they're going to want to come back and pay ticket prices. And then I'm going to want to hire you back so that they can keep that cycle going. Um, so it's, this is, you know, this is, we had a great example of that was one of our, one of our clients was, um, he was just, he'd gone through grad school, he was getting an artist diploma, and he kept auditioning and auditioning and auditioning, which just was, he was getting so frustrated. And this was, he had gone to uh, top three best schools in the nation right, for right. his bachelor's, his master's, and his PD, his mm -hmm. performance, performance diploma. diploma. And he was he was getting so frustrated and, and just kind of deflated because none of these auditions were turning up anything for him. And within a couple of weeks of, of working with us in our program, in our coaching program, he started to embody this transformative singing mindset rather than an, what we call an impeded singing mindset. Impeded singing is when you're worried about your technique, you're worried about your, your words, you have, uh, you're trying to impress people, you're trying to make sure that you don't screw up or you're trying to show off or whatever. Uh, it's, it can be a, you know, over uh, overconfident or underconfident in either case, but still you're impeding the expression of that emotion. Yeah. So he moved out of that impeded paradigm, started transformative singing, 
And within just a couple of weeks, he got his first professional contract with an opera company and then just recently got another professional contract with another opera company. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's mm -hmm. been just he's been taken off and doing some amazing mm -hmm. things. We're super proud of him. And the difference, really, when we when we think about it, when we try to codify what is the difference between these two things, between the the impeded singing and the transformative singing? Well, it's where our focus goes, right? Because when we are impeded singing, whether we are thinking of how good we are and how much we want to show off to our audience, or we are thinking about, oh, my God, I'm not good enough. I am, you know, insufficient. And I like I have to focus on all of these levels of my um, technique. I have to focus inward on my breath, inward on my alignment, inward on my laryngeal stability, inward on my resonating spaces. Whenever we're focused inward on ourselves, then we miss the opportunity to fo focus outward on the story that we're telling and on on the opportunity that we're presenting to our audience to join us in a shared reality. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But so here's, you know, like we said before, you do you do have to be able to sing well. Mm. That's just not the point. The singing well isn't the point, but it is a necessary part of the process. You can't just get up there. Like how many times have we seen, you know, if you ever watch like the America's Got Talent or the, any of those types of shows, you get up, you see these people get up on stage and some of them will blow you away. And some of them get up there and they, I think they do this less now probably than they used to. I remember like the early days of some of those shows, they would let these people out that, had no business actually being uh you know auditioning at a high level but they made for good tv apparently they would get up there and they felt like they were really good they felt like they were they were really emotionally invested but they had no idea how to use their voice and it was really embarrassing it was a heartbreaking um, thing it made me really sad that they used to do that and and i've had a lot of students that come through that fall into that category that they they are so artistic and emotionally invested in what they're doing but they really don't know how to use their voice yet and so it's necessary to go through all of those things to figure out how is my alignment going to affect my voice how is my the way that i'm breathing are there different styles of breathing that i can explore that are gonna that are gonna help my voice work better what's happening here what am i experiencing in my you know in my throat in my neck in my we call this the neutral zone um, is this really staying neutral or am I working? Am I muscling my voice out? What's happening with my resonance? You have to become aware of all of these different steps of the process in order to, as we say, to get your body out of the way of your soul. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to, that's what technique really is. Yeah. It's getting your body out of the way of your soul so you can express things without any of those impediments. So you got to train your voice to be able to do that. You got to have an instrument that can do what you want it to do. And it took it took me a long time to to get to that point. Like I had these artistic ideas that I wanted to express, but I didn't know how to do them for a long time. I had to train my voice to get there. So that's a huge part of this transformative singing process is developing your technique. But it's developing your technique from a holistic standpoint, not just from a mechanical standpoint, because so much of what we do as singers is is goes beyond just what we're doing physically with our bodies. That's a big part. Yeah. It's not the only part. Right. Absolutely. And what we're doing with our bodies is almost always unconscious. 95% of the time it's unconscious. So uh, even if it's something that we're doing with our bodies, it's probably something driven by some subconscious belief that we hold or even a conscious belief that we hold that is driving our bodies to react in some way. If we think high notes are hard, then our bodies are going to react by tightening as soon as we see a high note on a page, right? And there are all of these things. If we think our voice is bad, if we think it's too bright, if we think it's too dark, if we think it's too big or too small, or we are going to come up with compensatory habits that just get in the way mm -hmm. and that don't allow us to express fully the, the authentic spirit within us. Yeah, yeah. So holistic vocal training, is something that integrates it's, it's holistic because it's it's involves the in, the whole instrument the whole person it integrates the whole body not just not just your larynx and your lungs but the whole the whole thing and how it all works together but then it's also your mind your like you were just saying what are your conscious and unconscious thoughts and beliefs and assumptions that we carry around that are affecting the way that our body works what and then so body and then mind and then heart what are the emotions that i'm portraying and how do those how does that emotional state affect the way my body works how does my you know my emotional reaction to this character to the other characters on stage or to whatever the music is about how is that affecting my voice 
how can I use that to, to uh, how can I use my voice and its natural emotional reactions to convey that emotion more effectively to my audience? So I'm not just making the same sound all the time. I'm painting with lots of different colors. Yeah. And then, so our four pillars of holistic vocal training are body, mind, heart, and spirit. Spirit, as when we talk about spirit, this is not a religious thing. This is, uh, you know, this is not pertaining to any sort of tradition at all. This is your sense of who you are. Yeah. It's your core essence. It's, it's your understanding of your core essence of who you are at your most fundamental self. And how does that understanding inform your artistry, your ability yeah. to express that experience to other people? Um, so this is all this is all part of the transformative singing process. It's building your building your technique so that and it's not building your voice. This is actually a term that we come across a lot. You're not you don't have to build your voice. Your voice is already there. You just have to get out of the way and let it out. We're yeah, we're voice revealers, not mm -hmm. voice voice builders. Yeah. So we're building technique so that you can get all of these impediments that we build up over our lifetime. Get those impediments out of the way so that you can freely express who you are. You can freely express some aspect of the human condition in a way that makes people understand it and feel it in a new way themselves. Yes, absolutely. So how can you do this? How can you go about uh, encountering the transformative singing process? Well, we have, um, in a couple of weeks, we are doing transformative singing boot camp. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, we've never done this before. This is a three-day intensive experience that uh, we are super excited to give. We've done lots of uh, courses and classes and things um, live, online, in person before, but nothing like this before. And so this is actually all, it's, it's the transformative singing process, but it's all new material. So if you've, if you've taken one of our classes, if you've done one of our workshops before, you might be familiar with the concepts that we are talking about today, but yep. this boot camp experience is going to be brand new material because we're constantly working to come up with new stuff. We're yeah. constantly working to go beyond where we are right now to grow ourselves mm -hmm. so that we can help our students keep growing. And really to open ourselves to new wisdom, which is is what um, I think the purpose is in life, right? And we open ourselves and we allow, uh, we allow ourselves to move through us and we allow new information to come to us. And um, that's that's part of this whole process, right? Is allowing ourselves to get out of the way um, and allowing new things to come in. And so one of the things that we find through this transformative singing process is that we constantly have new ideas, new understandings, mm -hmm. new insight into how to teach and to how to sing and to how to guide people into themselves. Yeah. And and because it really what it comes down to, I mean, the reason we're called Sing For Your Lives, the reason we named our company this, is because it all comes down to, you know, the things that we learn about our voices. When we discover our voices, we discover ourselves at a deeper yeah. level. The, the lessons that we learn in a, in a voice lesson are really life lessons in mm. disguise. And so as you uncover your, the true potential of your voice, you're uncovering the true potential of who you are and what you can become on stage and off stage. Yep. So, um, so we have an early bird special going on right now for this uh, transformative singing boot camp. If you register by Friday, um, then you get an incredibly low price on this thing. We're only we're offering it for only seventy nine dollars. There's six sessions, so think if you think about this, a, a one high quality voice lesson, like a, a serious voice lesson that you're you're um, you're trying to really do something with your training, you're gonna pay minimum a hundred dollars for a one hour voice lesson. Sometimes upwards of three hundred. I've heard of even people that charge four hundred dollars for for a single hour voice lesson. Yep. Um, you're getting six sessions, five of them are one hour session. The last one is a two hour session That's seven hours for only $79. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't afford not to do that. As they say in the used <laughs> car commercials, I'll try not to be a used car salesman, <laughs> but, um, we, uh, you, we're going to encourage all of you to take advantage of this because this really, this transformative singing process, it makes a difference it and it allows you to use your voice to make a difference in your own life but in the lives of the people that come and hear you so um you can take advantage of that i'll put a uh i'll put a link in the comments here you can take advantage of that early bird special by clicking on the link 
that I am putting in there right now. And um, make sure that that's actually the right thing. Yes. And uh, so take advantage of that. Save some money. Even after the early bird special, it's still going to be an incredibly low price. But this is even incredibly lower. So uh, take advantage of that before Friday. And we can't wait to see as many people as we can possibly help in that boot camp in those sessions they're live but you can also uh you can access them all as uh as recordings if you can't make all six of those sessions um so anyway um we hope to see you there we hope you have an awesome day get out there get singing and don't be an impeded singer be a transformative singer have a great day guys